Come on. Hello? Please just make the spinning wheel of doom go away. Please just make the spinning wheel of doom go away. Please just make the spinning wheel of doom go away. So today I'm going to give you three techniques to help mitigate that spinny wheel of doom. We can't eliminate it completely because, well, that's Steve Jobs' greatest joke on all of us. But we can help reduce all of the factors that help bring that little spinny wheel of doom into our lives. Now, I guarantee one of these techniques you've heard a million times, but what you haven't heard is how it can be detrimental to you later on if you don't take one thing into consideration. Now, one of these techniques I'm pretty sure you haven't heard of, and I don't think I've heard anyone talking about this, but ooh, it's my favorite because it's the one that will actually affect you the most while you are editing. So let's get the obvious one out of the way, the one that everyone talks about, but also the one that can leave you screwed in the middle of your project if you're not careful, and that is optimized media. Final Cut Pro will take all of your footage, whether no matter what camera or resolution it came from, and it will take those files and optimize them to files that it likes to work with the best, thus speeding up the editing process. The problem with this and what can leave you screwed in the middle of a project is it takes those files and makes another version of those files. They're still massive file sizes. So that means that you're taking up a huge amount of extra space on your hard drives. In some cases, quadruple or even more the amount of space that a normal file size would take. So if you're not prepared for that, you're gonna be left stranded in the middle of a project because you have no more space on your hard drive or trying to figure out well, what can I delete? What can I move? Do I have something to move it to? It can cause a lot of headache at the worst time possible. Now there's two types of optimized media, better quality and better performance. When you're editing, you're gonna to wanna to choose the better performance because that's gonna give you the best performance in real time while you're editing. The better quality is gonna be well, better quality to look at, but it also slows you down while you're editing because it's the highest quality. That's gonna be your export quality. Now to get around this whole problem, we're gonna use proxy files. And this operates this basically the same way. You can create proxy files when you're importing your footage just by clicking a box. And of course, if you haven't done that and you're just realizing, oh no, I'm gonna run out of space, I need proxy files. You can always create proxy files at any time during your project. Now proxy files, they operate the same way. It copies those files and creates a new version of them at a much lower resolution and quality. Now you gotta keep that in mind when you're looking at it on your screens and you're looking at your footage and you're like, God, this, this looks like garbage. That, no, it's just the proxy file showing you a lower resolution. But what that does is it allows your computer to use way less processing power and allows you to move through your timeline so much faster without having to get that little spinny wheel of doom pop up whenever you make the slightest of changes. Now technique number two, I'm gonna call close it down because that's what we're doing. We're closing things down. Look, if you are looking at something on the screen, it's taking processing power to keep these things up and running. So if you've got things running like Apple Music or Spotify or Photoshop or Lightroom or any other programs running in the background, close them down if your computer is starting to lag. Now the same thing goes for Final Cut Pro itself. If you have a lot of windows open that you're not using, it's using processing power to keep those things open and showing you that real time information as you make your edits. Close them down. You'll be able to put that processing power it's taking to keep that window open into actually making real time edits. Now if you're thinking, ah, I don't wanna close any of my windows, I use all my windows all the time. That's fine, I get it, cause I'm kinda like that too. But one thing you can close and will have a big effect on the processing speed is your libraries. I know at times I can have three or four different libraries open depending on what I'm working on or if I'm trying to grab some settings over from a previous project that I just worked on, I'll open up those libraries so I can get to those. But that doesn't mean that I'm using that library all of the time. Close that thing down and save that processing power for your editing. Ooh, and now it's time for my favorite one, the last tip, the one I don't think anyone ever really talks about, and that is connected 
clips. So what is a connected clip? Well, a connected clip is anytime you drag a clip down on top of your main timeline. So think of this as uh, B-roll or B-cams or anything that's gonna sit on top of your main timeline. Now the interesting thing about connected clips is how they render. Now as soon as you put a connected clip down on your timeline, it starts to render, which is gonna slow down your, your ability to edit. So the easiest way to speed up that rendering so you can get back to editing at 100% is to just take that connected clip and chop it into smaller sections. It doesn't seem like that would make sense because it seems like you're giving Final Cut Pro more pieces to work on. But for some reason, that the way that the program works is if you have a 10 second clip, it will actually take longer to render that 10 second clip than it would if you chopped it up into say five two second clips. Doesn't make sense, but it works. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, but then I have five clips to deal with. What happens if I want to move them around? I'm going to have to deal with five different clips. Yes, that's true. If you don't do this, all you need to do is to select all of your clips, hit command G, and that puts it in its own little contained box. Think of it as it's a secondary little magnetic timeline where you can go in and adjust all of these things and it's all going to stay together. And then you can move this entire thing around just as if it were one clip. Now I prefer to do it this way instead of making it a compound clip because it's easier for me to see where those breaks are and modify things if I want to. There's a little bit more involved in modifying something if it's in a compound clip. Now we'll talk more about compound clips in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. Now even though I have a pretty beast of a computer and it's pretty fast, I still use this technique all day, every day, because it makes such a difference while editing. I think I made it pretty clear, but personally this last tip was my favorite tip. But let me know in the comments below which of one of these three tips was your favorite one. You think gaff tape will fix this bullet hole? I hope so. This thing's expensive.